Hey everyone, before today's episode, I just wanted to give a huge thank you to our new patron, Caitlin Kruger. After leaving West Virginia, we turned south again. We were heading towards Florida because I had decided that I wanted to look for the skunk ape next. Given the few Bigfoot species we'd already discovered, I figured the existence of one more would be a safe bet. So Mia drove, and I started doing my research. Right around South Carolina, however, something else caught my eye. Reports of pets disappearing and other animals being found just butchered. Wounds indicated they were definitely killed by an animal. Now, there was nothing specifically cryptidy about it, but the reports were all from along the St. John's River, which, like the skunk ape, was also in Florida. I couldn't remember why, but the name of the river sounded familiar. I was pretty sure I had seen it reading about cryptids at some point. So I switched gears from the skunk ape and started to do some digging into other Florida cryptids. The beast of bears, moss man, giant snakes, even some sea serpents. But none of them quite matched up. So let me get this straight. We're still going to Florida, but you don't know why? Come on, I know why. I just don't know what. Right. And we don't even know if there is a what. Animals are being killed, I know that much. Lucas, animals get killed all the time. That's literally how nature has worked since the dawn of time. Animals die. It doesn't mean there's a cryptid behind it. It could, though. Mishapeshu was eating pets. Right, but there were also legends of a creature like Mishi in the area. You haven't found anything about this river. No, I haven't found anything yet. The name rings a bell. I know I've read about it before. I just can't remember where it was. Besides, these killings only started happening like a month ago. It's definitely something out of the ordinary. It could be a normal animal that got loose. Or something that wandered out of its usual habitat, like an alligator. Aren't gators everywhere in Florida? I don't know, probably. You're the animal person. Yeah, I am. Which is why I'm trying to tell you that I don't see anything weird about this case. Fine. But humor me. If I'm wrong, we'll still be in Florida and we can still go look for the skunk ape like we originally planned. Mia finally agreed to investigate this mystery creature, so we continued making our way south. As we crossed into Florida and decided to take a break from driving and stop for the night, I tried to do some more research. I finally caught a break. And I actually made a few discoveries all at once. Uh, Mia? Yeah? Things just got a whole lot worse. What? They found a little boy. Danny Lau. In the same area as all these missing animals? Yeah. Was he... Yeah. (sighs) Shit. That's not all. I have been looking at the reports again, as many as I could find. I've marked them all on the map. Now, see, this one here was the first one, then this one, then this one, and they've been consistently moving up, following a path along the river. And the river... Leads up to... what are those? Towns? Geneva, Austin, Sanford, they're all on the water. (sighs) If we don't stop this thing, little Danny won't be the last victim. And that's not all. There's more? Yeah. I finally realized where I heard about the St. John's River. This book here. There's a story in it about a creature called the Gator Man. Gator Man? Some kind of giant alligator. Well, I guess not giant. Gators already get pretty big, but this one might also be bipedal. This story is the only account of the creature I've ever seen, but guess where it was sighted? 
I'm gonna take a wild stab and say the St. John's River. Bingo. So I'll try to sum it up, but basically this guy saw it a few times over the course of like three years. I assume he wanted to stay anonymous because the author who interviewed him doesn't share any details besides the fact that he was 16 when the encounters started, which was in 2010. He didn't actually see it the first time, but he saw a manatee covered in scratches with a bite mark on its flipper and a chunk ripped out of its tail. And according to him, manatees don't have any natural predators, or at least none in that area. Uh, Then in 2011, he was camping with his group of Boy Scouts in something called the River Lakes Conservation Area. He was on his own at one point and saw a dark figure standing under a group of trees. He couldn't make out any details except that it was too big to be human. And obviously at that point he ran away. Now, over the next year, he claims to have heard roars and hisses coming from the woods that didn't sound like any other animal he was familiar with. This really doesn't sound like much. Uh, Just wait. The final sighting came in 2013. He was kayaking on the river and noticed that manatees were fleeing the area, or at least swimming away as fast as a manatee can. Uh, But something bumped into his kayak a few times, so he got out of the water. Uh, This creature starts moving towards the shore, and he finally got a better look at it. He said it looked like an alligator at first, but its skull was the wrong shape, like too tall, and its arms were too big. Then when it got out of the water, he could see that all of its limbs were too long. It reared up almost seven feet tall, then it roared at him, got back into the water, and swam away. Huh. Okay, it still doesn't explain why these attacks started happening all of a sudden, but you might be onto something. Well, whatever it is, even if it's not a cryptid, we need to stop it before it reaches those towns. Yeah, we need to get down there. Fast. At more than 300 miles long, the St. John's River was the largest in Florida and ran for almost as long as the state itself. Our destination would be the wilds outside of a town called Chuliota, northeast of Orlando, and roughly around the middle of the course of the river. This whole area east of Orlando is covered in state forests and conservation areas. Very isolated. We decided, given the ticking clock of the creature moving towards civilization, we couldn't waste time going back and forth from town, so we decided we would just bring our things and camp in the woods. When we finally reached the parking area that would lead us into the woods, it turned out that we weren't alone. Sitting in the dirt lot was a nondescript black car. Looking at the license plate, I noticed what appeared to be a small red and white coat of arms. As we parked, the driver's side door opened and a man stepped out. He was wearing a black suit and tie and dark sunglasses. Even if he had been dressed differently, we still would have recognized him. It was the man who had rescued us from the Leviathan cult and invited us to join a group known as the Ordo Sancti Georgi. Shit! What the fuck is he doing here? Just play it cool. Miss Miller, Mr. Campbell, good to see you again. I got here as fast as I could, although I thought for sure you two would have beaten me here. What are you doing here? Oh, did he not tell you? Excuse me? Give us a minute. Lucas? Mia gave me a death glare and motioned for me to get back into the car. Clearly, she wanted to talk in private. You fucking invited him? What the fuck were you thinking? Why didn't you tell me? I'm sorry. I'm sorry I didn't say anything. I knew you'd be mad. You're goddamn right I'm mad. I just... well... I emailed him a while back, and we kind of got to talking. Just a little bit, back when I was laid up with the broken ribs. What? I was just curious about their organization. You can't blame me for wanting to know more about them. And you two have stayed in touch? Only occasionally, just by email. I can't believe this! Are you being serious right now? Listen, don't worry. I told him we weren't interested in joining. He told me we could always change our minds. Not a chance in hell! He said, even if we didn't change our minds, if we ever ran into another dangerous creature again, we could still count on the Ordo for help. (laughs) Help? You mean help killing? 
Well, yeah, in this case. Mia, this thing is dangerous. You know that. It's already killed a child. I don't know why it's heading for those towns, but we need to stop it. And we can't afford to take any chances. These guys know what they're doing. So, what? The helicopters and the commandos will be here any minute? No, nothing like that. When I reached out to him to ask for help, I told him that you weren't comfortable with the group and their morals. He agreed to come alone. It's just going to be him and us. So he's going to, what, tag along? He's just here to help. Besides, he never actually told me much over email. I figured if we hung out in person, we might be able to find out more about this Ordo Sancti. Come on. It's the men in black. You can't tell me you don't want to know a little more about them. (sighs) Fine. On three conditions. Of course. Do not mention my grandfather. Assuming you haven't already blabbed about that? No, of course not. I won't say a thing. And you have to hold on to Fritz. Keep her tail hidden. These guys hunt cryptids. I don't want him to know we've been carrying one around with us. (laughs) What, you'd think you'd want to kill Fritz? She's harmless. Better safe than sorry. Okay, fine, yeah. Lastly, do not say anything about my powers. Not a word. The first person we told tried to make me into a guinea pig. And the second one tried feeding us to a shark. I'm done telling people. Especially someone like him. Oh, yeah, of course. That's like your thing to tell people. But what if you do sense it while we're out there? Then I'll pretend I don't? Right. Of course. So we're clear. Crystal. Have you two cleared up any confusion? Yes. Let's get this over with. And who is that? Oh, this is Fritz. Our pet ferret. And you just take him around with you? Her. Yes. Usually if we're looking for something dangerous, we leave her in our room. But since we haven't gotten a room around here, she'll be coming with us. Of course. And so the three of us, well, four counting Fritz, headed off into the woods. We started near the area in which the boy had been found, but further upstream. This thing was following a path along the river, and so were we. What's your name, anyway? If we're gonna be working together, I guess I should at least know that much? Of course, my apologies. You can call me Agent Sawyer. We can call you? Is that your name, or just some spy alias? (laughs) You're very perceptive, Miss Miller. Lucas tells me you two have kept in touch since Mexico. Just helping field inquiries into the organization. Right. The Ordo Sancti Georgi. That's it? You know, I looked into the name. The Order of St. George, is that right? It is. Oh, like the St. George that killed a dragon. The very same. I think you can see why our organization chose that name. Like St. George, we have dedicated our lives to protecting the innocent. By killing animals. Monsters, Miss Miller. Not animals. And yes, we do what we have to. If you insist, what can you tell us about your organization, anyway? Not much, I'm afraid. Just because you know about the existence of aberrations, it doesn't mean I can tell you all of our secrets. Most of our information is classified and restricted to members. You understand we can't tell those things to just anyone. Of course. Aberrations? Sorry, that's our standard designation for monsters. You know, something that is not normal, unnatural. Makes sense. And what about history? How long has the Ordo been around? Organizational history is given to all new recruits. First thing we teach, actually. But still, classified. Right. Speaking of recruits, how big is the Ordo anyway? Another company's secret, I'm afraid. Of course it is. So... If you guys are named after St. George, does that mean dragons are real? (laughs) I've certainly never seen one. There may have been dragons at one point, but if there were, no one's told me. What about the Piazza? I wasn't on that app, so I can't say from experience. Given what I've heard about it, though, I could see the similarities. It's possible that Europe could have had similar creatures. Ha! Yes! Please don't encourage him. 
We spent that day following alongside the course of the river and searching for any signs of the creature we could find. No luck, though. When the sun started to set, we finally called it a night and set up camp. Well, Mia and I set up camp. Agent Sawyer just unfurled a sleeping bag. No tent. I guess he travels light. Anyways, we ate dinner, went to sleep, and continued on the same path the next morning. And around noon, we finally found some tracks. Definitely looks like an alligator, but no mark from tail dragging. Which means... It is probably bipedal. Are you sure neither of you want to reconsider joining? This was a good hunch, Mr. Campbell. Come on, man. Lucas. And thanks, but we're fine on our own. Sorry, Lucas. But my point stands. You saw reports of some missing animals and followed your gut. And Miss Miller, it seems you already have experience with tracking. You would both make fine agents. You have no idea how hard it is finding people who actually see aberrations. Then having to train them, and then making sure the talented agents don't quit. Low on manpower. We have enough, but we could always use more. The tracks lead upriver. That's what we were expecting. Let's keep going. So we continued following the river. It was good to know we were definitely on the right track now. A few hours later, we stopped when we came across the carcass of a recently killed animal. Sure enough, it looked like it had been torn to shreds by another creature. Ugh, gross. What was it, a dog? No, not this size. Probably a deer. Good thing you brought the hunting rifle. You're telling me you don't have any guns in that bag of yours? Of course I do, but it doesn't hurt to have some extra firepower. By the end of the second day, we still hadn't found the creature. But that night, we talked and decided we would set a trap for it. Now, since alligators are mostly nocturnal, we figured the creature was more likely to be out hunting at night. Unfortunately, we didn't exactly have anything to use as bait, uh, besides ourselves, and no one wanted to do that. So, the next morning, Agent Sawyer went into the woods alone and spent the day tracking deer. Mia was against the idea, and to be honest, I wasn't super thrilled about it either, but we were racing against the clock. We couldn't afford to waste another two days hiking back to our cars and going into Chuliata just to get meat to use as bait. Eventually, in the early afternoon, Sawyer returned to camp, dragging the body of a deer behind him. We found a suitable location in a clearing by the side of the river and placed the body of the deer there. Once the sun began to set, we each climbed one of the nearby trees that overlooked the clearing. Seeing as how Mia was more opposed to killing than I was, we decided that I would take the hunting rifle. Mia took the dart gun, since it was the only other suitable weapon we had. And Agent Sawyer was armed with some kind of fancy-looking sniper rifle. Once we were all settled in the trees, we waited for the darkness, and whatever it would bring with it. Did we get it? (gasps) We did now. The creature, which was definitely some kind of alligator, came out of the water, heading for the bait. As it approached, I got a little overeager and fired. I just grazed it, which only served to anger the creature. It looked around, and when I swore, it turned to face me. Before it could charge my position, however, Agent Sawyer fired two shots into its back, which knocked it to the ground. As with normal alligators, this one's back was covered in thick, armored scales, and neither of the shots actually penetrated. Once it fell to the ground, though, Agent Sawyer was able to fire another shot through the soft underside that had now been exposed. And with that, the creature stopped moving. Alright, folks. Good work. I mean, you're the one that saved our butts. I only pissed it off. Hey, despite Miss Miller's reservations, there is more to my job than just killing. You two still discovered the case and found the creature. We're not interested. I know, I know. I'm just saying, you two have talent. 
With the Gator Man taken care of and the nearby towns now safe, Mia was more than eager to return to civilization and bid our guest farewell. So we did. After leaving the woods, we went to the nearby city of Sanford, just north of Orlando, got a room, and spent a few days enjoying a well-deserved rest. On one of those nights, I got a video call from Annie, the girl from Monster's Den I had been, you know, talking to. Annie, hi! Hey, Lucas! What's up? Um, could you get Mia? Oh, um, yeah, sure. What's up? Do you have a second? Yeah, sure. Mia, this is Annie. Annie, obviously, this is Mia. So this is Annie. Nice to finally meet you. You too. So? Right. Um, Mia, as you know, Lucas and I met on Monster's Den. So I've heard. I've been listening to the podcast since you guys started. Okay. And Lucas... I wanted to tell you for so long, but I finally worked up the courage. Should I really be here for this? Yeah. It only seems fair that I told both of you. Told us what? So, all that stuff in the podcast, the monsters and everything else, it's all real. Yeah, of course. I wouldn't lie about something like that. I wish it weren't real sometimes, but yeah, he's telling the truth. We have seen some crazy shit. Well, if you've been listening, you know what I mean. So then, you can really talk to animals? Well, I wouldn't quite say I talk to them, but... But you have powers. Yeah, I have powers. Why? Well, because I do too. Field notes, Gator Man. As usual, I could complain about the stupid name, but this is Florida, so I can't really say I'm surprised this time. But, true to its name, it is some sort of alligator that can walk bipedally. Well, to be accurate, it resembled more of an ancient type of crocodile, perhaps a descendant of something like Caprosuchus, although it had a tail much shorter than average for most crocodilians. It stood seven and a half feet tall, and when swimming would have measured just over ten feet long. The creature was definitely aggressive, carnivorous without a doubt. Although I still can't explain these attacks all of a sudden. Perhaps it had been hibernating all this time, or something? Maybe, by chance, it just never made its way near inhabited areas until now? I can't really say. But in a field like this, you have to settle for unanswered questions, more often than not. I'm still not happy we had to kill it, but given the size of the creature, its thick scales, its demeanor, it was a threat we had to stop. We did the right thing. If I can't tell myself I'm doing the right thing, what am I even doing? End field notes. The Cryptid Cases has been a production of Little Giant Monsters. You can follow us by searching Little Giant Monsters on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram to keep up to date with everything we're working on. We even post a sketch of the latest cryptid every Monday after a new episode. You can also visit our website, littlegiantmonsters.com, to see all of our content in one place. While you're there, want our designs on stickers, t-shirts, coffee mugs, and more? We now have merch. Just look for the merchandise link on our website. If you really like what we're doing and want to see us do more please consider supporting us on Patreon. Rewards include behind-the-scenes content, bonus material, and more. Search Little Giant Monsters on Patreon or find a link on our website. You can also help us by leaving a rating and review on iTunes. Not only does each review warm our cold, cynical hearts, but it helps us move up the charts and bring the show to a wider audience. Your continued support means so much to us. Thanks for listening and see you again soon. Mm -hmm.